Hello YouTube, Easy Astronomy here, and today while I was browsing the internet, I came across this prototype camera called the Tiny One, which is supposed to be an astrophotography camera that's going to revolutionize amateur astrophotography as we know it. But there appears to be a lot of evidence to the contrary as well, so I thought I'd give my opinion on whether or not it'll be worth your time when it comes out, in addition to where I think the hobby is going to go in the future. So, first off, I have to say that I don't own a Tiny One. I don't think anyone does except the developers at this point. So according to the Tiny One's webpage, the Tiny One is the world's first astronomy camera made small, smart, and social. It allows you to capture the stars in the palm of your hand. And Tiny MOS began with the goal of making astronomy exploration accessible to the masses. Troubled by the difficulty of astronomy imaging, then-professional photographer Gray Tan sought to solve it using the latest portable technologies. And I could not think of a more admirable goal for this camera to have. Like, bringing astronomy to people everywhere, I, in my mind, I can see absolutely nothing wrong with that. And it can only mean good things. But even so, those are lofty goals. So I asked myself, how have they been put into practice? And this is what I found. Now, no surprise, I found that the trailer on their pre-order page did a very, very good job of listing exactly what the pros were of this camera. And I really couldn't find anything else on their website or articles written about it or anywhere else on the internet I could get my Gravity Paws on that listed anything else that wasn't on there specifically. And what that really is, is that it's undoubtedly the smallest astrophotography camera ever. No one is disputing that. It looks cool, fits into your pocket, and functions like a regular camera when it's not taking astrophotos. And overlooking the fact that you just created a version of Starwalk in your augmented reality device, I think this is also a great idea. Like, I use Starwalk all the time. This could be super helpful if this were my camera. But we also have to consider that while their goals are definitely grandiose, citizen science isn't going to become the next Pokemon Go simply because something big might be released. But it could do a lot of good for the hobby in general, like getting people interested in astronomy and astrophotography. But unfortunately, that brings us to the negatives, which uh, in my search and skepticism, I found that nearly every positive facet of this camera had a negative concern to go with it as well. And not gonna lie, some of these concerns were really scary. Also, surprise, I'm a shirt-changing wizard! But anyway, where was I? Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> so can we just stop and appreciate the fact that he says that this camera works with all lenses out there? Like. The kid holding the camera is sitting next to the dad with a giant ass lens. No way that's going to fit on the camera. And I know he meant telephoto lenses only, but still it came off vague as all heck. But all incorrectness in speeches aside, there's still a lot of factors that really, really worry me. First and foremost being that no one's actually been given a camera to beta test it which kind of concerns me considering how far they make themselves look into development through their trailer and their website. I'm not sure about you, but that kind of leads me to think that they're trying to hide from software or hardware issues that they're still having in this stage of development. And through that then, we have a ton more questions that need answering under that umbrella. Questions like, why are none of your photos or time lapses being taken in cities? The areas with the most potential buyers, if your noise and light reduction algorithms are as good as they say. Why are all exposures only 30 seconds long? Could you edit them to allow the capture of more light? And how do we know you're not going to stray from your point and shoot mission, when you already have so many different lenses, tripods, and accessories available for purchase at a price that still makes beginner telescopes look competitive, when you haven't even created a camera yet? And finally, this is something I think only you guys could answer. And I'm not a person with a lot of expertise in this area. I don't have any social media accounts, but it seems like one of the biggest draws for this camera 
is its instant sharing feature. And I want to know your honest opinion. Like, would you take photos for the sole vain purpose of boasting about it online to your friends? Or would you take photos because you can now see and bask in the light of stars and galaxies from unfathomable distances away? Or am I misrepresenting this entirely? Please let me know in the comment section below. And finally, this brings me to the last part of the video. What about the hobby? What does this pioneering GoPro of astrophotography, the tiny one, say about where the hobby's going? And the answer is, I think it says something super positive. And while we're going to have to wait and see on whether the tiny one pulls through on us, I think we can definitely say something right now about the astronomical community based on this. I think it says something really positive about us as a whole, that we're realizing problems and working to address them in a way that makes sense for us. And even if Gray Tan and his team don't produce the world's best astrophoto setup in one simple camera, I think that we're within the arrow that we will. Because that's what I think the kind of global community astronomy is becoming now. That Kickstarter was fully funded in four hours, and it's great to see so many of us caring enough to finally look up at the great expanse of eternity that we have set before us, or at least support those who do. So thank you. I think I'm going to leave that there. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, so I can continue to produce better and better content for you guys. This has been Easy Astronomy, and here's to dark nights and clear skies.